Hi folks, welcome back. This is the third video for the lecture on qualitative data analysis. And in this part of the lecture, we are going to look at some practical techniques that you can use to analyze your qualitative data. All right, the first thing that we're going to look at is coding. Coding is very, very important for the data analysis procedure for the qualitative methodology. And what, what is coding? Okay, coding uh, by its definition, it is the process to break down your text data into components or fragments which um, contain certain meanings. Okay, and we usually would give the fragments certain names or labor, labels, and those names or labels are called a code. So throughout your interview transcript, you could draw out keywords or key phrases, um, either using the word which has been used by your interviewees or you could give them a new name and those um, keywords would be your codes. Okay, so that is kind of a um, definition of what a code is or what a coding process would be. That, that is a very simple um, description of what a coding process would be, but we would recommend you to do a more systematic coding process, which you, you would see in the uh, next slide. Um, and here, well, the second point listed on this slide is related to uh, when you are using the theoretical sampling, theoretical sampling. So when you're using theoretical sampling, as we said in our last video, um, you tend to interchange between your data collection um, process and your data analysis process. And by coding your data in your data analysis process, you may find that you may need to modify your sample or you may need to change your sample expand your sample etc then you need to carry on with your data collection process okay this is just a recap the importance of coding or what coding would enable you to do all right this is a quite kind of a famous model of the coding process well as we have different levels of coding and um, if your research project is very simple and if you have very um, simple research design, you could do less levels of coding. But for your dissertation, I would recommend you to do these three levels of coding or at least two levels. Um, so it by saying one, two or three levels here, it refers to how many rounds of coding that you would do. And also in terms of how abstract that your coding would get to. As you can see here, it's a, it's a pyramid shape and the pyramids here represent the four and how descriptive uh, your coding would be. So at the level one coding, your codes quite usually would be quite descriptive, which you may use the word which has been mentioned by your interviewees as a code. Well, as, as you're getting higher and higher um, for the levels, you your coding would become more and more abstract and theoretical, uh, or some people call it analytical. Okay, right. Um, we will explain them, um, like how to do um, 
the basic level coding and how to do the more advanced level of coding. Okay. And um, so we will start with the basic level of coding. And um, here I call it open codes. Some people also call it uh, initial codes or initial coding. Okay, so this is the first step or this is the basic step uh, for the coding process. It's in the, this first step, so as we said earlier, coding is about breaking down the text into fragments, isn't it? So here is the first step that you would start with breaking um, the text. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the text uh, from your transcript to um, draw out the key message from those texts and try to summarize a keyword which can represent the, the message and expressed in those texts. Okay, that, that is that would be a code for you. And this open code, open coding process is the starting point where you would transfer from your transcript to a code book that you would create um, during this data analysis, analysis process. And as I said earlier, at this level, the basic level um, for the pyramid model, the data that you get or the code that you get is, is more descriptive and, and is basically summarizing what your interviewees have said or what other type of your um, text, text-based qualitative data have said. And later on, you would gradually build up from the single keyword note or code to categories, to categories and to themes or patterns. Okay, so it's getting more and more complicated as, as, as you build up your code. So that will be the second, second round or the third round. Well, at the beginning round, at the first round, it is basically quite simple and straightforward and you get more numbers of code when you're at level one and you get less and less numbers of codes as you are building up building up your your codes okay and uh, here i would like you to do a uh, exercise okay here um, is an example of a interview transcript on the topic of friendship, friendship at work. And you can see there, um, here is a, um, some answers from this interviewee with the coded name of Jane. They don't have to be called Jane, it, it, is, it could be a pseudo name. And, and here, I would like you to pause the video and try to code on this paragraph, okay? It doesn't matter if, if you're not sure how to code, you just do whatever you think would summarize the key messages that you can get from this paragraph. And Usually, you, you can get more than one code out of um, a paragraph like that, okay? So now, please pause the video and try to write on some, write some code or keywords that you can summarize from this paragraph on the right-hand side. You see a blank there on the right-hand side. Okay. All right. And um, I know this is a 
asynchronized learning environment that I, I, I can't just wait here. And um, so if you haven't, I mean, by the time you, you start to watch uh, the video at this moment, I assume you have already finished the task. Okay, if you haven't, feel free to spend more time in trying to coding this paragraph. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example of code. All right, so this is the paragraph uh, of the example, the interview transcript. So what codes that we can generate from this paragraph? Well, we don't need to have exactly the same code, but that, that is just, um, here I want to show you an example of what a code would, can be, look like, okay? So here, the first code that I get is, is um, the difference between acquaintances and friends. Okay, so only a few people would be friends. Most people at work are just acquaintances or just colleagues. Um, or it's more like a difference between acquaintances um, and friends. Okay, a second message that I have got out of this paragraph is quality is well quality is more important than quantity in terms of friendship okay um, and another message that I got out of this paragraph is how much uh, we know about um, the people's job is very important And another code could be, you know, friends should be useful or friends should be helpful. So here is, it could be, you know, how this interviewee understand about friends. So here she mentioned about that um, friends uh, would help you to help you out as much or put you or put in a good word for you so there I interpreted as friends as helpful or useful and uh, another code that we could generate from this paragraph is about mutual support or support Mutual support is important for uh, friendships at work. Okay, so there is an example of what what a code could look like. As I said earlier, um, everyone's codes could be different. You don't have to have exactly the same codes as I show as I have shown here. You can have your own codes. And, and, then, and also, depending on what your research topic, or what your research question is, um, you, can have, you can definitely have different codes which would help you to answer your research question. Well, as here, I don't actually, uh, I didn't tell you what the research question is uh, for, for, for this transcript, so it's probably harder for you to work out what message should be uh, would be relevant and so that they they can be put as code but when you are doing your own research project you should already know your your research question so that will be helpful for you to decide which information are related which information are not related so that you know what information you can use to put as a code or what information are not relevant so you you don't have to code every sentence uh, from your interview only code the sentences or, or the text which would be helpful for you to answer your research question okay and um, and by the uh, bottom of this slide I put a notion called in vivo codes. 
Okay, in vivo code, it refers to the type of code where you use the word or expression which has been used by your interviewees. Okay, so it rather than using the code which you learn from literature. Okay, so this type of code, in vivo code, it refers to the, the keywords that you get from your interviewees rather than you get from literature. Okay. Right, so after this initial step of coding, where you work from this uh, transcript to, the, to a code, as you can see there, I have uh, shown uh, five codes on the right-hand column. So on those, uh, out of these five codes, so if you work through your whole transcript, you should be able to get more than five codes, isn't it? So this paragraph, we have, we have already got five codes. And then you work on the next paragraph until you finish your transcript. You will get a lot of codes there on the right-hand column. Right, sorry, right-hand side or right-hand side column. So out of these codes, these will be your initial codes, and we call it code book sometimes, or, co or note. So on these uh, code book, on this list of codes, that is your le level one coding, okay? And out of these codes, you can then try to merge some of the codes if you see things which you can categorize them okay let's say let's see here out of these five some of them could be mergeable okay and um, or they are related when you see a relationship among those codes you could build up the relationship and by doing that you are categorizing your codes Okay, so here is the more advanced level of coding. So from your level one coding and for level two, you started to um, kind of um, shrinking the number of your uh, code, that the codes that you have um, built up um, from your level one coding by categorizing them okay put similar codes or codes which are related together group them okay group them into categories or themes and then in the next level in the level three further group them into a um, smaller number of um, themes or categories gradually you would build up a you would see a pattern. Sometimes people use like a, a tree, tree shape to, to show the, the relationships um, between their codes or between their themes um, or use, use other shapes. Okay, so here um, showing that this slide is showing uh, on a more kind of advanced level of coding when you reach to a point that you could see a pattern of the categories of your codes or you would see a pattern pattern of um, the themes of your codes okay so you are trying to build connections uh, among your categories as well Okay, so there are a couple of uh, different connections or relationships among your categories. It could be you try to connect um, your codes into certain context. So that context could be context in different workplace or context in different geographical location or different time period or 
uh, different career uh, pro uh, like progress, or it could be economic dif uh, context, or social context, or cultural context, etc. And um, so you could relate the category into different contexts. That would be one way to build up the connection, or you could build up the connection by looking at cause and effect um, or consequences. Well, the, the second point and third point uh, listed on the slides are very similar. <laughs> One is we are trying to build, um, we are trying to link X with Y when X would uh, lead to Y. Okay, or the third one, we are trying to find um, the cause for why. Okay, so so those X or Y refer to your categories, the categories that you have summarized from your codes. Okay. Right. So, um, when we are doing our uh, qualitative data analysis, what are the actual tools that we, uh, we could use? Well, I remember um, my supervisor uh, from my uh, master's uh, program and from my PhD program said, hey, used um <laughs> he used hands to build up his codes at that time when he was doing his phd there wasn't um word or excel or, or, or any other more complicated packages so he was he was just write down everything and and maybe just cut and paste using a scissors and and try to group the codes and try to merge a pattern out of it. Well, as now with the um, technology, um, we could use we could use a lot of um, devices and softwares to help us to uh, manage our data. Um, so you can use Word, like when we are. For example, this one, it could be, you could do this in the Word document, well as on the left-hand side of a Word document, you, you, you put the transcript of your interview. And then on the right-hand side, you can put all the codes. So that's, that could be one way of, of doing it. Or, and after you have drawn out these codes, you can put the codes into an Excel and try to, you know, cut and paste and try to group them and, and cut and paste, changing the orders so that you can find some um, common themes merged, okay? Uh, and we do have some um, data analysis packages. So NVivo is the most famous one for qualitative data analysis. Um, well, it is claiming it is that it is a qualitative data analysis software, um, but I would rather put it as qualitative data management. And software because it doesn't do the coding for you. You still need to code by yourself, um, but it helps. It helps. It helps by um, sorting out your code after you have finished coding manually by going through um, your transcript sentence by sentence in the software. It could help you to and merge a pattern for you. For example, it could show some um, models of, of different circles and you could see the relationship like a mind, uh, mind, mind map. Okay, anyway, if you, if you haven't 
used this software before, I would recommend you to have a go. Um, and for the students in our university, uh, you can use this software for free because the university has paid for it, I think. Um, and here I put a link on how you can download or where you can download the software to your own computer. And I have prepared a workbook for you. And so this workbook is like a guide uh, where you can follow the guide step by step. And on this workbook, there are a lot of screenshots. So you can follow uh, the steps, not only by reading the text and the menu, but also you can look at what each step would look like in the software. So this workbook should be helpful if you haven't used this software before. And also I put a, a link uh, for you to download the workbook and this link will require you to use your university IT and ID. Or if you're using a university computer, or that naturally would, would give you an access. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, we are uh, reaching to the end of this video. To conclude on qualitative data analysis, uh, well, we have talked about grounded theory. Um, quite a lot in the second video where we introduced what grounded theory is and we also criticized um, some potential issues or some debate more is it more of, more of a debate on grounded theory um, among scholars um, on, um, on social sciences the people who are using grounded theory um, do have you know, some different understanding about how to use grounded theory or, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of using grounded theory in your data analysis, in qualitative data analysis. Um, having said that, um, well, I would recommend you to use grounded theory and at least to to begin with, if, if you don't know how to analyze your qualitative data. And the qualitative data, no matter how objective that we want to reach, after all, it is a qualitative methodology and it is heavily dependent on the researcher on how they would analyze the data. As, as in the coding example that we did just now on friendship, um, those codes there still could be very subjective, isn't it? So it depends on um, the researcher themselves on what codes that we want to emerge. Okay, so it depends on how we as a researcher would interpret the meaning from the transcripts. Okay, so this is something to bear in mind. And um, finally, on coding, I want to emphasize the importance of multiple rounds of coding as shown in that uh, pyramid shape uh, model. If you can't do three levels, at least I, I, I hope you can do two levels, two levels of coding for your dissertation if you are going for a qualitative research for your dissertation. Well, as you know, start with something basic and descriptive. So those codes could be you know, quite long. Uh, in terms of the number of words that you're going to use uh, for the code. And then as you are doing more rounds of the coding, you try to emerge those 
and well, we call it open coding, open codes into more kind of themed codes. Okay, we try to merge those, those codes into themes. So those themes would cover the codes at the uh, basic level. Okay, right. Um, finally, before we finish the lecture, I hope you can spend some time at least a few minutes to write down anything that you feel like you learned from um, today's lecture. It could be something totally new or it could be something you already knew in the past but maybe at a certain point there was a light bulb moment where you feel you are inspired and hopefully um, you have learned something new from me or you feel more like you know more about um, those notions you already know. All right, take some time to write down your research diary. This will, should be a good practice um, later when you are preparing for the summative assessment for this module, as well as when you are preparing for your dissertation later in the academic year.